Thank you uh, very much, Christine, and uh, thanks uh, to all of you. This has really been uh, a simply extraordinary, uh, rich and stimulating set of discussions. Uh, and uh, as uh, Susan said, um, uh, informed, directed, uh, and inspired by the patients um, uh, who are here to uh, help lead the discussion. In many ways, it's been pioneering. Uh, it's been a pioneering activity for the Institute of Medicine uh, and uh, the National Academies uh, in uh, focus, in scope, and importance. Uh, it embraces at once the central challenges that are facing the healthcare system uh, today: better outcomes, lower costs, uh, faster uh, progress, uh, and it's done so by seeking uh, what in many ways is the holy grail of motivating and mobilizing the people who are served by uh, health and, uh, and, and health care in our nation as drivers for change. Um, and that holy grail really is uh, to uh, democratize the influence of people on each of those dimensions on care improvement, on lower costs, uh, and on quicker progress. Now, not surprisingly, when pursuing a holy grail, the path can be occasionally elusive, uh, or at least um, a little uncertain, um, and that's clearly the case here. Uh, it's the case because, as uh, Art just pointed out, we're looking to the future. Uh, and we have to keep our eyes in the future uh, very squarely, um, at least continuing to look uh, as far beyond the horizon as we can because things are changing very rapidly. And we, we can't be held captive, held back, held down uh, by perspectives that are shaped today uh, in circumstances that may not pertain tomorrow. Uh, uh, we've heard a number of, um, of really interesting uh, not only ideas and stimulating notions, but uh, a number of take-home phrases, a few of which I jotted down. I'll, uh, I'll share a few of them uh, in each of the three categories that uh, particularly struck me. Um, by the way, one of them is not the one that Tressa pointed out, which said, my wife lays out my medications for me. <laughs> <laughs> that may have been a memorable phrase, but I, <laughs> I can't underscore that one at least from personal experience. Uh, uh, we've, um, we heard with respect to care decision strategies um, that uh, a meaningful care experience is when someone goes out of their way. Uh, we heard listen first, listen fully. We heard patient engagement is a skill, not a trait. We heard connectedness and connectivity count. We heard decisions aid, decision aid saved me time from one provider. We heard, and we've heard, and we've heard, uh, culture eats strategy for lunch every time. We've heard that real innovation is truly disruptive. Uh, the reference, I think, on that count was to the disruptive innovation of paying out of pocket, but equally disruptive is what we're seeing with respect to the movement of care to the point of the individual, whether it's diagnostic or treatment. Uh, we have a whole revolution of where care is going to be delivered that's occurring now. And we heard about the power of distributed leadership. All of these and others uh, uh, shape our thoughts about what we can do with respect to care decision strategies that will improve uh, the future of health and health care. On the count of value uh, and quality strategies, uh, value with a U or with an E or with both uh, even, uh, we heard uh, that uh, money is a proxy for quality in every industry but health care. 
uh, over the long term, and uh, of course that is true. Uh, we heard that wise use of resources resonates, though, uh, with people and offers the opportunity to build on it. We heard to let, uh, we were advised to let quality lead uh, on value. Uh, we heard about the importance of the three second rule. If it's not engageable in three seconds, forget about it as a means of motivating change. And we heard that symbols matter uh, in, when conveying uh, information uh, on outcomes and quality uh, and cost, uh, and that absolute dollars register more than dollar signs. Uh, in uh, at least in what we want to see happen with respect to health care. Uh, we heard that uh, the, uh, that uh, check marks uh, the value spot with uh, your work, I think it was Soshana, uh, with the, the little check mark and Judith, wherever she is uh, <laughs> in the back. Uh, uh, we heard uh, the question, who's the trusted translator? and a very important uh, perspective to bear in mind. And we heard that real incentives have feedback loops. Uh, and just as important uh, as our getting the initial message right is getting the dynamic of the feedback loop uh, right. In the area of uh, knowledge generation strategies, uh, we heard that patients uh, represent unta untapped data streams. That's clearly uh, true. Uh, we heard about the paradox of protection. That is, in our interest in protecting patient privacy and, and, uh, and prerogative and so forth, uh, we have uh, left them unprotected uh, with respect to the potential loss in evidence that could otherwise be generated. Uh, we heard that without integration of care and learning, little hope of, there's little hope of solving the long tail problem and in many ways, they're all long tail problems. Uh, we heard that data sharing will drive change, but data sharing is not share cropping, uh, offering us an important admonition uh, that when we're going about the business of expanding our ability to mine clinical data, that, uh, and we heard that there be no surprises, permission matters. And we heard as a nod to the higher calling in knowledge generation, that we owe this to ourselves, to our families, and to society uh, to draw upon this resource uh, for improving the public good in its most fundamental fashion. Well, from these uh, and many, many other take-home phrases throughout the course of the day, uh, and in the last panel as well, we've heard a number of uh, suggestions about what needs to happen uh, as we look to the future, as we look to the future with respect to care processes, with respect to scientific insights, and with respect to price, cost, and value. Um, and these are just beginning hints because they're obviously suggestions that will need to be built upon. And I'll just to give you two or three examples from each of the categories that um, have been raised as follow-up um, uh, challenges. Uh, in essence, uh, we're uh, deal dealing here um, to pick up, I think, a, a term that you also use, Susan, uh, what we need to pull along uh, as we're pulling our way uh, into the future. Uh, in the care decision strategies arena, uh, we clearly need to focus on ways in which uh, decision aid uh, and, and decision information can be mobilized um, as, uh, and delivered as efficiently uh, as possible um, to begin to work on the issues of trust, begin to work on the issues of the multiple loci of, of information that's developed and improve the access to trusted information across the board. Um, uh, of course, uh, programs like Choosing Wisely are fundamentally important steps in that respect, and there's much more that we can do. Um, we also can uh, 
explore, it was suggested, uh, the uh, possibilities, uh, uh, possible approaches to shared decision making as a covered benefit. Um, what are the strategies here in order to uh, uh, provide the uh, economic incentives possible? We can also, if we're really interested uh, in care culture um, uh, that changes, both professional care, care culture and, and other uh, uh, elements of the culture that uh, shapes our future care delivery processes, make sure that um, we're clearly future-oriented um, uh, as we go about the training of health professionals to make it clear that uh, in our training processes that it's not just uh, team care, uh, but that it's team care with the patient firmly embedded in the, uh, in the center of the uh, attention process and that the learning really draws from the patient. In the quality uh, and value uh, arena, uh, some of the possibilities include um, those just mentioned about um, marshalling the information on quality and costs and value uh, in more reliable uh, fashion. Uh, what that, uh, in effect, uh, discusses is building the science of transparency. Uh, and to do that, we're going to have to do better at, uh, I think it, it was Barbara who mentioned this, uh, marrying the processes of gathering information on costs and those uh, with gathering information on quality uh, uh, so that we have uh, a more level playing field uh, in sharing information uh, with the public uh, and that we we should not despair of the fact that we have such an abysmal uh, set of uh, data points at this point on cost and pricing. We have a fundamental societal obligation to improve those data points. Uh, we can't just ignore them and, and uh, uh, but that may be in many ways um, uh, our most fundamental challenge uh, if you're looking at the nature of the changes that have to incur, uh, occur is to um, do every can, we, everything we can to marshal honesty uh, in our information on costs and, uh, uh, and uh, prices. And then finally, uh, another suggestion that was made in, uh, on this arena is to work on the display uh, and the graphic strategies for communicating information on quality, costs, and value. Uh, in the uh, knowledge generation arena, uh, we clearly have to develop a communication strategy to better make the case to the public that they can and should be advocates for using their information for care improvement. Uh, we uh, d need to develop practical, trusted approaches to privacy um, uh, and uh, consent. Uh, as we deal uh, with the need, with the imperative to draw uh, in a um, seamless fashion on clinical data for, new, for scientific advances. And we need feedback approaches again in this arena that will bring the utility uh, of the information uh, closer to home to patients themselves not just to society as a whole, but to patients themselves. Well, there are many, many other uh, suggestions that have been made throughout the course of the couple of days. It's uh, such an incredibly rich uh, set of conversations. Uh, we'll be going over the transcripts um, of, uh, to identify common themes and strategies on each. Uh, we urge you to um, send in any other thoughts that you have, and we'll be sending out an appeal for other thoughts you have about ways in which we can uh, uh, both refine the strategies that are most important uh, and, uh, again, as Art said, uh, to develop some priorities uh, around ways in which we can all work together to move forward on them. Uh, and um, uh, I want to uh, take this opportunity now as I uh, suggest that you not only send your uh, cards and letters uh, to uh, Claudia and, uh, and Julia uh, in the uh, follow-up, uh, but to again thank them 
uh, for the great work they did in pulling this meeting together. Thank uh, each of you, uh, both presenters and participants in the effort. And again, one more time to thank our, um, our planning committee that uh, made this meeting possible. Terry Adderham, Leah Binder, uh, Ronnie Goff, Mark Gorman, Paul Grundy, Art Levin, uh, Jim Mangia, uh, Lynn Paget, uh, Eric Racine, Susan Reinhard, Craig Robbins, John Santa, Susan Sheridan, uh, Susan Trinidad, and last but certainly not least, Christine Bechtel. Thank you all very much. <laughs> To be continued, uh, safe travels home and thanks again.